Hey there folks, Gary Bradley here, and in this video I'm going to show you how you can create drop caps inside of InDesign. Now I'm going to show you this in three different techniques. The first of which is how do we do this as quickly and as efficiently as possible, just uh, ad hoc formatting some text in a document. Second of which is once we've applied that formatting, how do we capture that as a paragraph style to use somewhere else and control globally and save lots of time? Third technique then is if you want to add more uh, kind of visual interest to it, how can we do that? Like change the color and things like that. So that will be done with a character style in combination with the paragraph style. So I guess the first question really is, um, what the heck is drop cap? Well, drop cap is a visual technique used to make the first character of a paragraph larger than the rest. And you can achieve that by dropping it down two, three, four, or however many lines in height that you wish to. So the kind of thing you might see is at the start of a fresh chapter in a book, um, you'll have the first character. In our case here, we've got a magazine, so it can be used, you know, in lots of different publications. It, it originates from the Latin initialis, meaning at the beginning. So to achieve this inside of InDesign, if I pick up my zoom tool and then zoom into this region here, where I'm going to play it. And if I switch to my type tool and insert my cursor into this first paragraph in here, you'll find the options for a drop cap up and in the control panel at the top of the screen. So at the moment, I've got this set to character formatting. If I change it to paragraph formatting controls, and then the two options are just here. So I can increase the number of lines it drops down. Now, when I tap on that to change it to one line, obviously there's no difference because it already occupies one line height. But once I change it to two or three or four, in fact, that's exactly what it does. So if you want to create a drop cap inside of InDesign, that's where you do it and that's how you achieve it. You know, nothing more to it than that. You could, if you wanted to, use the option underneath to include more characters in that drop cap. So by default, it's just one. But if I tap up, you can increase more and more characters to be added in there. So clearly with mine here, set to four lines that it's going to drop down, um, it's not really going to work because I can't fit the whole word Sunday in that first line. So I can drop this back down again inside of here. Um, you could also find these options in the paragraph panel as well. So if I press Command, Alt and T or Control, Alt and T, it takes you to the paragraph panel and those same options are down here. You can increase the number of lines and you can increase the number of characters like so. So that's it. That is the quickest, easiest way to ad hoc apply a drop cap to your document. But it would be good if we had global control of that appearance so we could apply it in lots of other places. So if I reset this back in here, like so, I'm going to close that down and then I'm going to go and open up my paragraph styles from here. Now this text already has a style applied to it um, and it's called body no indent. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on there and I'm going to choose duplicate style. And when that pops up on screen, I'm going to call this, uh, yeah, you guessed it, drop caps. Uh, make sure the checkbox is turned on for apply style to selection. And then I'll go down the list on the left hand side to drop caps and nested styles. And from here, then you get the same options. Number of lines. Well, I'm going to set this to three. I am going to leave this to include just the first character, the S in there. And by default, your character will be aligned to the left edge of the text frame just to help visually that left edge of all that block of text look like it lines up nice and neatly. Also notice that there is an option there called character style. I'm going to come back to that for the third technique. So once I've done that, you know, I can go down to the bottom and I can click OK. That is my new style applied in here. And if I wanted to, I could go to another part of my document, just click in another paragraph with a type tool active and then I can click on drop caps does exactly the same thing. So if you want to capture it in a paragraph style, that is the second technique that you can utilize. Now, I don't want to apply it in here, so I'll just click back on um, body in there, and then I'm going to go back up to that first paragraph. The other technique involves a character style. So if I just hover over and drag and, so and select that first character, then I'm going to go to character styles, go down to the bottom, and then alt or um, option click on that icon to go straight to the dialog box and then from here I'm going to call this drop box. I'm going to make sure that apply style selections turned on and previews turned on and then well from here my best recommendation is 
just click OK. Now, granted, I haven't done anything to alter the appearance of that character. So the reason why we come out of character style is we know we have it applied. It's highlighted in the list in there, but having it selected with the type tool is really going to get in the way of us seeing what this formatting looks like. So I'll hit the escape key and then click away from the text frame. So it's not active whatsoever. If I go back to Dropbox and then right click on there and choose edit Dropbox, make sure of course that um, previews turned on. And then from the list in here, I'm going to go to basic character formats and then under font family, first of all, I'm going to change the appearance of this. So I'm going to go and I'm going to choose a font in here, which is Clarendon extra wide. So we already get a change in appearance. Uh, make sure the font style is set to regular. I am going to come back to this option in here and I will tell you why I want to do, but it's an important option to have a look at with tracking for this. And then I'm going to go down and choose underline options. Now, I know this might not seem the most logical thing to do because if I turn on this uh, checkbox here for underline, well, yeah, that's what we get. It doesn't look particularly good. It's crashing into the text underneath, but I don't want an underline. I'm actually going to cheat and break the rules here and turn this line into a box. So I think the best thing we can do, first of all, is change the color because by default, it's always the same color as your text. So click on the drop down menu then choose something different set off with it. I mean, it could be a branded color, which will be the whole point of this. Click on that, and then I'll go to the weight option. Click on the drop-down menu, because everything's blank inside of here, being character styles, and then I'll change this to something like uh, 40 points. So it is now looking more kind of box type looking. Now that appearance will always go behind your character. Then it's a case of just trying to align it up, which as you can see here, because by default it's set to uh, underneath your character for an underline, it's not where we need it to be. So we go to offset, click on the drop down menu, and then you can just put any value in here. You'll then be able to just tap up and down in here. So if I just tap down, as I tap down, it will move that box upwards. So I really need to increase this quite some distance. What I'm really looking for is to get enough of this box to go around the top and the bottom of this character. And I really want this box to be level with the, um, with the cap height of this character. So it needs to be a little, not as uh, thick as this. So drop this down, maybe a few points. Let's try 35 points. And then I might need to just drop this down a little bit further. Let's go with minus 14 for now. And then um, I don't want to keep my text white. So I will go and jump quickly back over to character color, set that to paper. So we get an inverted option now. You could leave it in the same color as it was, but set to paper, so we've got an inverted character now. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to advanced character formats, and I'm gonna to go to baseline shift. I'll tap in there to hit the tab key to get a value in there. And in this case now, what I'll do is I'm gonna tap down and change that to minus two. So I can pull that character down ever so slightly. So it's, you know, just catching where it might just be the top of those characters in there for the word Sunday. Then I'll hop back over to underline options just increase the size of that a little bit sorry increase the size of that um and of, of the offset in there so we're looking good in terms of that that's that's all fine and then the final thing is to jump back over to basic character formats because you might notice that the box now we don't have any white spacing here it runs right into these characters on the right hand side we don't want that so we can solve it with tracking and if I click on the drop down menu for tracking, if I choose something like uh, 25 points, yeah, it moves it a little bit. I might increase that just a bit further. Maybe 50 points of tracking in there will give us enough of a gap in that drop cap to start off with in there. So yeah, I'm fairly happy with that. It's looking okay. Now, we do have this little overhang in here. So I'm going to come back to that also. But for now, we've pretty much done with everything inside of the character styles options. So just to point out, I changed the fonts family in here. I've increased the tracking to increase the white space between my drop cap and these three lines that it's dropping down. And then under advanced character formats, I changed the baseline shift. So I pulled that character down two points so I could pull the whole thing down and try and get it level up at the top. I went to character color, changed that to paper. And then under underline options, I made my weighted underline really thick, changed the offset to move it up and then change the color in there. So all done, click OK. Then what you do is something which seems really bizarre, which is to swipe over that and then click on none. I'll hit the escape key on the keyboard, go back to 
paragraph styles. Now, if I just show you these, if I drag them like this, pull them back up so we've got these side by side. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hover over drop caps, right click on it and choose edit drop caps. With this on screen, then if I go back to the same options for drop caps and nested styles, I'm going to click on the drop down menu and choose Dropbox. You see there, it adds it into the formatting. We can also turn off a line left edge, which pulls that box in now. So it's not aligned to where the character is, but the aesthetics in there. So that's a nice squared corner that we've got in there. And that's our drop cap. So it's all built together now. If I click OK, and if I go to another paragraph as I did earlier, let's go to another page and then go here, zoom out touch. I can click in here and then let's go to this one, just as an example and then choose to apply drop caps. Same formatting inside of there. So that is how you can apply a drop cap inside of InDesign. I'm going to remove that off there, so I don't want it. And we'll go back to our original page. So three different ways of creating a drop cap inside of InDesign. There's ad hoc formatting. You can capture that basic appearance in a paragraph style, or you can add more aesthetics by combining the character style to the original paragraph style. So. Thanks for watching, folks. As always, if you enjoyed the video and found it of value, please give it a thumbs up. You can always subscribe and click on the bell and all that jazz. Um, if you've been watching my channel for any kind of a length of time now, you will probably know that I post a video here every Friday. So until the next one, farewell, folks.